I have an outdoor show as well. It's a little bit different. Um, it's a show by Theater Y, which is located in North Lawndale. It's a show called Laughing Song, and it's uh, a piece that combines story, uh, a laughing song, a walking dream, full title. It's a four-hour show, but don't let that distract you. Particularly, if, uh, like me, you're not as terribly familiar with the West Side neighborhood of North Lawndale. The song, the, the a laughing song, is the title comes from George W. Johnson, who was one of the first, actually the first, I believe, black recording artist in the United States. And his big hit was called Laughing Song. So it's about laughter, it's about the history of North Lawndale, as seen through the eyes of one of its more prominent residents, longtime performance poet, artist, storyteller, singer, Marvin Tate. He's our tour guide to the past that takes us throughout parks and uh, public places and squares and little hidden corners down these boulevards, the beautiful gravestones. Uh, North Lawndale has the largest extant collection of gravestone buildings in the city. It tells the story of two different men at two different times who were artists and who have had to overcome different difficulties, different weights of history. It's not so much a biographical narrative as it is a collection of impressions. Very, it's a very much a collage and device. The cast is amazing. There are beautiful visuals interspersed throughout, and I think if you're willing to invest the time and, and just surrender to it, you'll find some very cunning moments here. And then you get a lovely chicken dinner afterwards at the Wyman Center on South Lafayette, which is where the performance begins and ends. So it's both a neighborhood tour, it's theater, it's poetry, there are moments of dancing, there are moments of clown work. It's quite unlike anything else I think you'll play right now. That runs through uh, August 28th. It is free, including the dinner, and uh, you can make reservations at theater Y. You know, I think the great strength of Chicago theater is that when it's working well, there is sustainability. There are companies that are not necessarily all trying to be Steppenwolf, but they're building their own niche. Um, and that doesn't mean they're stuck in the mud, that they don't change up leadership, they don't, you know, try new, new work, new aesthetic styles. But they're concerned more about, you know, working with what they have rather than go big or go home. Because I think go big or go home can become a really toxic mindset because, you know, there's no, you know, who says you have to be bigger, better, brighter, louder, more all the time? I don't think that, that particularly in theater, that that's always a helpful model. It's, I mean, I'm thinking about this again with, with the Theater Y show. Is that for everybody? No. Is it a very, do they have to keep the audience kind of small because you don't want, you know, 50 people, you know, around, you know, and you can't really get, you know, helping them get across the street and everything in North Lawndale. The logistics of that are challenging, but for, for me, it's just a great, beautiful example of the kind of show that can only happen in Chicago, literally, because it's a Chicago neighborhood. Um, that's the kind of vision that I think gives me hope. And not, and it's not something that everyone's going to do. Most people cannot afford to do free theater, although, interestingly, I think a lot of theaters have been going to that radical hospitality model to try to get, you know, younger and more diverse audiences in to, to partake of what they're doing. So I think it's just, I don't know, I guess I'm just advocating for everybody to take a deep breath, take a step back, start thinking about, you know, what does an equitable theater you know, ecosystem look like? And let's work together to figure that out.